and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, at Hungaroring for the season finale of the Eastern European Touring Car Racing Championship. We are here in Hungary and uh, we are about to start the race number one. So it is the season finale here in Hungary uh, for the TCR Eastern Europe and uh, cars already on the formation lap for the race number one of the weekend. And uh, it is Dusan Borkovic who has not yet lost a single thing this season in the TCR Eastern Europe so far Dusan Borkovic has been absolutely faultless and absolutely dominating he has won all the qualifying he's also won all the races so far and uh, now we'll see if in Hungary he can uh, stay in front of everybody else he said actually that uh, he's still hungry for more so uh, having won absolutely everything does not mean that uh, he's now taking things for granted uh, and uh, he proved that actually in qualifying when he was the best yet again that uh, he goes Dusan Borkovic in his Hyundai i30N basically he's already been crown champion uh, in the previous round in Brno and uh, is about to race again here in Hungary but not everything is uh, settled because we still don't know who will become the junior champion we still have a multiple contenders for that crown and uh, the biggest chances lay in the hands of Joachim Galash who's currently fourth in the standings he's got four, eight points basically exactly the same amount of points as Sandy Subek he is not in the junior championship, but in overall standings, they are basically sharing uh, P3. Joachim Galash wants to aim actually for the top three in the championship standings overall. And he's still got chances. He's still got chances to be uh, as high as second. Uh, we are forming up on the starting grid right now. And uh, it is Dusan Borkovic on pole. Alongside him, it is Milovan Vesnic. Behind them, Jachim Galash and Lukas Stolarczyk. Row number three, that's Sandy Subek and Tomáš Koreny here in his Hyundai, replacing Dusan Kouřil in this machine number 52. Behind them, Šimon Ladňák and Michal Makeš. And on the fifth row of the grid uh, is Radim Adamek and uh, Šimon Jablonsky. Now everything is set for the race number one, and we are go. Yakim Galash did not really manage a greatest of getaways. Sorry, that was Lukas Stolarczyk who is falling down the order. Yakim Galash actually started pretty well and is already battling it out for second. And look at that, Dusan Borkovic won his first place. It is Milovan Vesnic, last year's champion, who took the lead into the first corner. So Milovan Vesnic leading the way from Dusan Borkovic. Yakim Galash trying to attack the Serbian driver. Right behind them, Sandy Subak in his yellow Audi RS3. Then there is uh, Tomáš Koreny. And uh, Shimon Ladniak, who had a terrible, terrible getaway from the second row of the grid. Sandy Subak already trying to trouble Jan Kalash, but also has to look behind into his rearview mirrors because they are now full of Tomáš Koreny. Milovan Vesnic leading the race from Dušan Borkovic. It looks like Dušan Borkovic has already shaken off that pressure from Jakim Galash and uh, can now start focusing on his race ahead and uh, the battle for the victory. We are slowly completing the First lap of the race, entering the third and last sector of the track. 
these wine pipettes that uh, get us back up onto the start and finish straight. These long 180 degree corners. This is the last one of the circuit, and look at the pace that uh, Dusan Markovic is already managing. Vesnic still leading from Dusan Borkovic. Small puffs of smoke coming off the back wheels of that Hyundai as it's diving down behind its nose while breaking into that sharp first corner. This was a proper lockup from Milovan Vesnic. Not what we saw from Dusan Borkovic in the first corner of the track was basically just um, the rear, rear wheel being lifted up in the air while the car is diving down behind its uh, front axle and um, as the rear wheel get up in the air it uh, blocked the stop by the brake Tarmac, it creates those little puffs of smoke and so typical for the TCR machines. and Milovan Vesnic still leading and not really allowing Dusan Borkovic into any chance. It looks like this second corner is not really the best for Milovan. He keeps locking up into it uh, pretty much every lap and uh, Dusan is still very close behind him. Galash remaining in third that's also good for his championship aspirations because he is the highest placed of all the juniors that are on the track let me just uh, remind you of the stakes that uh, are valid for this weekend so Dusan Borkovic as already mentioned so far won absolutely everything that was on offer all the qualifyings all four of them actually so in Croatia at Grobnik, uh, in Slovakia, in Brno and also here in Hungary. And he also won all six of the races. So he was basically crowned champion already halfway through the Czech weekend last time out at the beginning of September. And uh, he's already collected 150 points, all the points that were on offer. Milovan Vesic currently second with 66 points, just amazing how much of a difference there is. It needs to be said, though, that uh, Milovan Vesnic left uh, out the second weekend, well, let's say skipped the second weekend of the of the season in Slovakia, so uh, that's where he lost valuable points as well, but still he remained second in the standings. Sandy Subek, he did not race at Grobnik, but uh, since Slovakia we have had him in the championship. Sandy Subek, 48 points so far, just like Joachim Galash, so uh, both are tied for points in third and fourth. Boldish Bence, Hungarian driver who 
has already been enjoying also his appearances in the World Touring Car Cup in his home team Zengo Motorsport he was on pole here actually a week ago in the WTCR race sadly did not manage to hold on to the first place then Michael Makesh sixth in the standings and he is the second highest place junior only four points behind Joachim Galash in third there is Shimon Jablonski with further two points. Uh, let's say further two points down the order or the drift. Which means it is still very closely fought in that battle for the junior title. So Joachim Galash leading by four points from Michal Makesh and by six points from Shimon Jablonski. And it is Dusan Borkovic already attacking Milovan Vesnic for the lead of the race into the last corner Dusan Borkovic on the inside but it looks like Milovan Vesnic has found some incredible speed down the straight but Dusan Borkovic still remaining on that uh, important inside line and he's been taking the lead of the race so Dusan Borkovic currently on course to the seventh victory of the season however we are still only in the first half of it and uh, Milovan Vesnic doesn't want to let him go just like that. Looks like as long as he has something to say about it, he will try that. However, Dusan Borkovic is now definitively, at least for the moment, for this battle in front of Milovan Vesnic. Dusan Borkovic said that even having won everything during this season has not diminished his view on the championship and uh, the title that he collected here and uh, he expressed how pleased he has been all the way through the season because well not only he but everybody I think appreciates how hard it is to keep the championship going under the current corona pandemic situation because pretty much every single week every single month all the regulations all around the let's say Central Europe change uh, as the pandemic um, evolves and uh, situations at borders with coronavirus tests and so on and so on has been very very lively so to, to stay updated to stay in touch and stay healthy stay let's say negative has been a immense challenge all the way through this shortened and delayed season and uh, sometimes it's been really hard to get all the necessary drivers get all the necessary teams and also to think about how to actually organize the point standings considering that uh, not everybody might have exactly the same chances somebody might be left out because of certain tests and so on and so on so it's been a huge challenge for the organizers and uh, team around Mr. Ksenek and uh, not only to him but also to the whole organizational team uh, Dushan has expressed his big thanks before this weekend and uh, he is in for the last two races of the season of course he as he says has not lost any of his hunger and uh, we see that on the track not only did he win the qualifying yesterday but also having lost his first place after the start of the race number one now he just uh, get it all back together and uh, mounted a challenge on Milovan Vestic and currently he is back in the lead of the race so uh, keep on racing as mentioned the battle for the junior title is very much on however Michal Makesh currently pretty much down the order he's only seventh whereas Joachim Galash his biggest opponent up into third this way Joachim Galash would jump up in the order in the championship by one place or well, basically he would um, pull ahead of Sandy Subek whom he whom we have here in his uh, yellow Audi 
being under pressure from Tomáš Korený. We are slowly finishing the first half of the race. Still interesting battles going on here and there around the track. All the way through the field. Tomáš Korený putting pressure on Sandy Subek. Not really letting him un or, or letting him enjoy much breathing space. Same goes for Michal Makesh who is trying to unnerve, let's say, Shimon Ladnyak in the battle for sixth. Shimon Ladnyak driving for the Czech run GT2 motorsport team. Tomáš Koreny trying to have a look down the inside of Sandy Subek. Well, unfortunately, the field only has 10 cars here in Hungary. It was supposed to have been stronger, but that after this battle because Tomasz Korani found a beautiful overtaking opportunity there at the end of second sector and uh, that's a place where you normally do not see any overtaken however hold my beer says Tomasz Korani and he just went for it and that was a beautiful move sadly for him Sandy Subek did manage to win his position back immediately at the exit of that corner that's probably why there never is any overtaking because that was a pretty opportunistic dive down the inside from Tomáš Koreny which then in turn compromised the exit of the corner and uh, Sandy Subek is experienced enough and uh, talented enough to know that uh, then at the exit there's his chance and uh, he just took it so the battle for fourth still very much on that was really beautiful there. But Tomasz Korani has to try again. So let's get back to what we were saying. Um, the field was supposed to have been stronger here in Hungary. However, we've had basically two casualties before we even started racing and this is again the battle for fourth and the nice switch back and forth between Subek and uh, Tomáš Koreny so um, this year's Renault Clio Cup champion Tomáš Pekas was supposed to take part in this weekend in the TCR Eastern Europe behind the wheel of a Cupra Leon however there was a problem in free practice one of the brake discs got broken and uh, the damage was actually so vast that uh, the whole chassis basically was damaged and uh, that means that uh, Tomáš Pekas could not go on in his weekend and he had to retire. We do not have him on the track, which is, uh, which is sad because uh, definitely he'd have been fighting pretty high up in the order. And also we were supposed to see a new name, Zoran Kastratovic. We've actually already seen him this weekend in his Chevrolet Cruze. Ooh, what a bit of a much opportunism from Michael Makesh that was too optimistic there we heard that long tire squeal from Michael Makesh as he tried to somehow overtake Shimon Ladnyak and uh, that was not really met with success so he at least examined the runoff area here in the first corner that's Michael Makesh sadly so we only saw the aftermath of that moment and it's ending not actually the root cause and the incident itself but we could 
hear it pretty clearly. Anyway, uh, Zoran Kastratovic was also on his way to contest this TCR round. However, he also ran into technical trouble, so could not take part in the end. So he's been at least racing in his Chevrolet Cruze in the lower categories. We saw him in that mixed up field in the previous race, where alongside the GT cars were also invited some of the TCR cars and some of the lower uh, touring cars. Some of the Lotus is uh, the Chevys and so on. So we've had Zoran Kastratovic on the track, just not here within the DCR Eastern Europe racing action. But anyway, even these 10 drivers that are currently on the track have been enjoying nice battles and uh, have been entertaining us. Seven and a half minutes left on the clock and uh, this is still pretty far from being decided. Andy Subek still holding on to that fourth place under huge pressure from Tomasz Koreni. He's staying behind, being patient, not jumping into any, let's say, knee jerk action. Six minutes left on the clock and it is still Dusan Borkovic leading the way in this race. Dominating the proceedings, still kicking up that inside back wheel into the air and uh, dragging it, and rubbing it against the tarmac, resulting in uh, smoke coming off that wheel. It is so aggressively set up. But it needs to be because Hungaroring is actually tight and twisty. It's just corner after corner and this is pretty much the only longest straight that there is on the track. With the best overtaken opportunity at the end of it being the hairpin of turn one. Tomáš Koreni is still behind Sandy Subek. Has not really come up with anything proper ever since that beautiful moment there in the second sector a couple of laps ago. has already allowed Joachim Galash to open up a gap of uh, more than 10 seconds to Sandy Subek. Joachim Galash running in third. Milovan Vestic in the meantime set the fastest lap of the race, but that's already been a couple of laps ago. Uh, even uh, faster than Dusan Borkovic. So far, Milovan Vestic and his fastest lap set at uh, 154.531 the best that Dusan Borkovic could do so far was 154.86 so some let's say three tenths of a second slower than that everybody else has been over 155 or even 156 I'm looking all the way through the field Borkovic leading by nearly five seconds Joachim Galash, some three seconds behind Milovan Vesnic, and then there's the 10 second gap to Sandro Skubek and Tomáš Koreni. They have been racing really closely, and they still are. Also, right behind them, further two opponents, Simon Ladniak in sixth and Michal Makesh in seventh. So, Tomáš Koreni 
having another go. Three and a half minutes left to go. So uh, time is slowly running out. No chance for Tomasz Koreni. He's got to find that surprise moment again. Something he did manage a couple of laps ago. Didn't work in the end, but that's the way to go probably. Because it seems to me that uh, along the start and finish straight, that's not really the chance that he's looking for. Because the Audi has been incredibly strong. I mean, this model in general, even if you watch, let's say, the World Touring Car Cup, always the Audis are so fast on the straights. Basically, the... Ooh, a bit of a sideways moment there for Tomas Koreni. He also ran off the track, but he's quickly back on it again. Sandy Subek and the Audi. Uh, this model really has a very, very low drag coefficient. And... Uh, being really very aerodynamic was that silhouette really helping the streamlining and uh, the top speed down the straights so it is very hard to overtake an Audi at the end of a long straight you've got to find your way past somewhere else very probably somewhere in the twisty bits that's a bit of a, a bit more of a territory that is not exactly to Audi's liking with this model. The Hyundai's are much better suited for that type of uh, sections. Same goes for the VW Golf GTI. Look at that. These are the twisty bits that lead on to the start and finish straight. Tomasz Korani is always very close there, but then comes the straight and Sandy Subek simply drives away. One and a half minute left. But this should be, technically, not sure. It could be the last lap. Michael Makesh trying to find his way around the outside and he is up into sixth. Michal Makesh, beautiful moment there and there's a bit of a contact again. Shimon Ladnya getting alongside Michal Makesh again, trying to be opportunistic, sticking his nose down the inside. But has to stick to 7th so let's see where Dusan Borkovic actually is because he is about to finish this lap. The question is, will he make it onto the start and finish straight in time for another lap, or is this it? Because that's very important. Well, to Dusan Borkovic, it, it doesn't really matter. However, for these guys, it's hugely important, and the time is down to zero. Dusan Borkovic is victorious for the seventh time on the trot. Seven out of seven for Dusan Borkovic. He has not been beaten this year. No qualifying, no race has had another victor, another winner than Dusan Borkovic. So this is the last realistic chance of Tomasz Koreni. Both drivers re-entering the start and finish straight, but this will not be enough. Sandro Stubek finishing fourth in front of Tomasz Koreni. Michal Makesh taking sixth on the last lap off the hands of Shimon Ladnyak. And then completing the top ten are Shimon Jablonski, Lukas Tularczyk and Radim Adamek. Jachim Galash in third behind Milovan Vesnic. He actually, in the end, reduced his gap to Milovan Vesnic down to 2.3 seconds or let's say two and a quarter of a, of a second so it is a p3 for Joachim Galash this is the ground that historically has been good for Joachim he's already been here on the podium and he repeats that this year as well in the first race so Joachim uh, finishing on the podium and uh, just cementing his chances to win the junior title this season I think it's still not decided. Michal Makesh finishing sixth, scoring not that much fewer points. 
that many fewer points. Shan Borkovic using the runoff area to pick up some dust and rubber and uh, any other dirt on his tyres just to make sure that uh, the car passes the scrutineering. That's uh, a normal proceeding for the drivers. They just try to pick up some of the debris, some of the some of the marbles, whatever they can, just to make sure that the car always passes the minimum weight limit. It is not illegal, so everybody's doing that. Sometimes you even see drivers running with half their car on the grass, on the Victoria Slap, as it is sometimes called, and uh, on their way back to the pits, because of course all the cars have to comply with the rules and uh, be above the minimum weight limit, otherwise they will get automatically disqualified, and you wouldn't want to do that, or you wouldn't want that to happen when you've just won another race. Even though it's already been settled for Dusan Borkovic, he is DCR champion for the Eastern European region for 2020. That's car number 66, Shimon Jablonski. Sharing this car with Bartek Meritsky in the longer races. And all the top 10 returning back into the into the pits so it was an interesting thrilling race Dusan Borkovic yet again victorious but that really does not mean that the race was boring I think really far from it and uh, we still have that junior title to fight for in the last race of the weekend however it has now been uh, spread out even more and uh, we are closer and closer to knowing the champion. Well, let's say, to put it in a better way, uh, Joachim Galash made a, an important step towards that crown today, finishing third and ahead of all his rivals in that junior class, namely Michal Makes, who was sixth over the line. <laughs> of this race this was the fight for the victory that was the moment when Dusan Borkovic overtook Milovan Vesnic for first Sandy Subek was under constant pressure from Tomasz Koreni and he very nearly made it that was a beautiful moment hopefully we see it that's the that's the situation it's actually the uh, the second part of the of the battle the one where Sandy Sube got himself back in front of Tomáš Koreni. Wonderful, wonderful try there. This was a bit of a crazy moment for Michal Makes, who very nearly lost it. And uh, in the end, he did manage to get back in touch with Shimon Ladnyak and overtake him into the first corner. There was a bit of a contact, a bit of a... Uh, door wrestling, let's say. And in the end, both remained on the black stuff. Borkovic sealed the deal with seventh victory of the season and the well even though this is not for the championship anymore it is for the home boys for the home team because it's been the Hungarian team Mira that has been preparing the Hyundai i34 the Serbian driver so for them it is nice thank you and uh, reward for the last weekend as well so home victory for the boys so uh, it's been another great race TCR always provides beautiful action watchable racing so I hope you enjoyed it and uh, you will keep on watching and uh, join us with more action that's coming up later and also tomorrow so uh, 
stay with us. My name is Pavel Fabri, I'm your commentator for the day and uh, for the weekend. And uh, thank you very much for watching and we'll see each other or let's say we'll hear each other uh, also later on. So until then, it's goodbye.